For a while now, I've been feeling a pulse in my brake pedal, um, and I can tell it's coming from the left front or the driver's front wheel, even on dry roads. So the ABS is activating, and today we're going to change out the wheel sensor in this Ford F-150, year 2000. If you can jack up your vehicle, remove the wheel, the brake rotor, and caliper, you can do this job. And we'll just set it down on the stands. There's the sensor. To get it out, we're going to have to remove the brake caliper bracket, the uh, rotor, and the uh, dust cover. A couple of standoffs need to be snapped off the brake hose. We have to remove this plug from the wheel well cover. It plugs into two holes. One's already disengaged. So this is going to have to come off the mount for the caliper bracket. A couple of bolts area to break loose and take it out of the way. This torque spec's 136 foot-pounds on these, so bring some equipment. It's a breaker bar type th type action here. It's about the longest breaker bar I could get in there. Yeah, it's always handy to have a piece of pipe to shoot with a little bit. And get it just as long as it needs to be. Okay, now this beat up old guard's got a dust cover's got to come off. I'm gonna spray these and let them soak a little bit. They're really bad. PB blaster on those. Yeah. In a case like this, I always scrape away the rust where the bolt is the cover. This thing was never torqued that much, but the rust is going to hold it back. Use a six-point socket. So I switched over to 930 seconds. Got it to give way. And I'm going to replace that. Okay, I have the 8mm on this lower one. That's it. Give way. All right. There's the third one that I'm not showing. So we get a couple of small bolts to find. And there it is. Okay, so we get a T30 in there. That sensor's been in there a while, and it's not going to cooperate. I'd really like to pull it out in one piece. Now clean this out a little bit. see the sensor coil because the outer sheath stayed in there. We're going to have to dig that out of there. Screw extractor. Well, that's adhered pretty good in this channel, so it took a little work to get this out of here. And it came out in a few pieces, but uh, we got it. And that's it. I'm inspecting that toothed wheel to make sure there's nothing in there that's going to get in the way of the sensor picking it up. Okay, it looks good in there.
Just a little bit of housekeeping here. And the last thing holding this in is an 8mm bolt behind this uh, tower here. The aftermarket replacements I've found to be pretty reliable. I haven't had a problem with one. Second time I've done this. Um, the OEM is like $127. Just can't see that for this particular job. Just comparing this for length and positioning of the, of the holders and such. I don't like surprises. Looks good. Okay, we do have to transfer these. Okay, turning that T30 in. If you do th th this job, it's not a bad idea to do them both, both the front ones. Because if one failed, the other's probably not too far behind. There were two years between mine. And I always put just a little bit of Never Seize on the threads. And in a case like this, just snug it up good and tight. Don't overdo it. So yeah, I couldn't find anything quickly for this, so I'm going to be trying to get one eventually. So I'll put the three bolts back in. I have new bolts. I have a 10 millimeter head to them. No 10 millimeters. up to 136 foot-pounds. And you shouldn't just leave this wiring connector hanging. There are a couple of holes in the uh, wheel well cover made just for it. Okay, we're just going to wrap this job up, get this truck back on the ground and running again. I got to put this job off a little bit, but I um, had to loan the truck to somebody and didn't want to leave it that way. So not a bad little job. You know, you can do it in a few hours, a couple hours. Um, DIY job. Very doable. With winter coming, we could be soon dealing with some wheel slippage, some real wheel slippage, and a need for the ABS to be working fine. Thanks for watching and Please subscribe.